Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Mentorship Mondays. So we're just going to give it a few more minutes, uh, just uh, waiting for a couple of more people to join before we get started. I see that our guest, Boniwe, has joined. Welcome to those that are still joining us. We haven't started yet. Boniwe, please do send through a request for you to be a guest on this live. Good evening, Dumiso. Welcome. Good evening, Fifi Graham. So while we wait for a number of people to join, maybe you can just uh, pop in the chat to where you are dialing in from um, so that we know exactly who is here uh, in our audience and where also you're joining us from. It would be good to just know who's who. Okay, I see Boniwe has just uh, sent through a request. Welcome everybody. If you're on the live, please do make sure that you tell Okay, we want to see a packed uh, line up, a packed, um, audience here just interacting with us i see ndumiso has just said that he is joining in from johannesburg and uh, i see bonnie where our guest is finally on welcome to mentorship mondays thank you so much Mbani, for having me today and greetings to everybody online amazing amazing Another uh, viewer saying that they are also dialing in from Johannesburg. So a lot of people in the City of Goals joining us today, hoping that uh, we can just get a bit more diversity in our audience in terms of uh, people calling in from all over the place. Um, oh, I see somebody from Botswana. Uh, oh. Welcome, welcome oh, to nice. the City of Kamboroni, which is absolutely amazing, amazing. Okay. Without any further delay, I will welcome everybody that is on the call now that Boniwe has joined us. Um, my name is Mbalim Zinyane. I am standing in for Nozi Poshawalala while she is traveling uh, for work. I'll be doing today's Mentorship Mondays takeover. And uh, we're talking about how to make a career pivot with Boniwe Dunster. Now, Boniwe is an HR specialist uh, as well as an HR executive. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share that, <laughs> but recently appointed HR executive, and uh, we're talking to her about what it takes to really make a career pivot, um, especially you know with the changing landscape of um, you know what is out there in terms of industries changing, with technology also just infiltrating and changing a lot of um, the industries that we work in. So a lot of people might be realizing that you know. They don't have the necessary skill sets. Uh, some people might have even outgrown their careers. And some industries might be deeply affected by uh, technological changes to such an extent that, you know, their roles or, or those industries end up becoming redundant. So how do you then make a career pivot if you are finding yourself in that position? And uh, this conversation is really just about that. And we're tapping into the expertise um, that Boniwa has in just sharing her her experiences and her insights as an HR specialist, but also to some extent as a career coach that has helped a number of people uh, grow within their professional careers. I'll start off with uh, the first question that we actually got from uh, the audience that it was a similar question that I was going to ask you uh, starting this conversation. And uh, Pum's yeah, Pums Ntlapo said, uh, what are some of the key indicators that suggest it might be time for someone to consider a career pivot? Sure. So oftentimes we get into careers all excited with the career path that's, you know, mapped out. But as soon as you feel some kind of stagnation where you are, and then with the work that you do, you are not fulfilled anymore. You do not look forward to going to work anymore or you feel mm -hmm. that you might have reached a ceiling 
it might be an opportunity for you to try to pivot out of uh, the space that you are. Sometimes there is so much that you have to offer, but you find that the environment is so, you know, limited, so constrained that you are, you are unable to share the skills that you have. Mm -hmm. And in that, you, you know, you are hungry for, you know, for more work. You are hungry to get your hands uh, dirty. But the space that you are in doesn't really, you know, uh, cater for that. Mm -hmm. In certain instances, someone might have just acquired a new qualification and they want to apply the, you know, the theory that they have learned into a practical yeah. working environment yeah. and they find that that yeah. opportunity is not there. So those are some of the things that would actually create or make someone to start thinking of having to pivot their, their career. And with the world that it is right now, we know that uh, careers or professions are not the same as they were in the past. You find that, mm -hmm. I'll make an example, you are in HR, but you've got um, an interest in data analytics, right? And therefore, you might actually want to move out of a traditional HR space, yeah. but more into, yes. you know, a, a data centric role you know so there are things that talk to your purpose that talks to your interest that talk to your engagement that could really lead you to wanting to pivot you know your career into a different direction yes yes um so you highlight a number of important points there but i want us to dial it back a little to just understand what the difference is with wanting to make a career pivot versus changing the company that you're working for yeah. or versus just taking a break because you could potentially just be burnt out and you need time to just reevaluate reassess before you know you put yourself back in a working environment because i think the differences between those three scenarios is very very subtle um but uh it's important to also know what is what and how to then approach and remediate um you know according to the situation that you actually find yourself in for sure so there's always different you know scenarios for different environments but let's start probably with pivoting your career out of uh, a space that you are in like i said you might yes. find that you have learned a new skill and you want to put the skill into practice right mm -hmm. and your environment doesn't really uh you know afford for that or you would find that you have different interests and in those different interests you can't use the combination of your interests and skills in one particular place and maybe you are only a specialist but you actually want to be a generalist right but uh, the environment doesn't cater for that and vice versa where you have been a generalist and now you have found your niche but you find that the environment doesn't really allow that and that could actually create you to not to pivot out of where you are but then when it comes to the organization whether it's time for you to move uh, out of your organization to look for greener pastures if they are green it could be because sometimes it could be because sometimes the organization doesn't really understand your career aspirations or they do not afford the opportunities that you yearn for in terms of growing your career. For example, you might feel that um, you want to actually be the next director in a particular place, but you find that the structure is so flat that there is no room, you know, for you to actually grow upwards, right? And that might feel that, you know what, um, I've tried to create so many opportunities for myself. I've tried to extend myself to get as much exposure but that's where it ends it means that that next level of me having to move up what it's not catered for for within the organization mm -hmm. and also that is not purely because when people start looking for opportunities outside their organizations it's not only because maybe it's a bad environment it could be yes. because the organization itself doesn't cater or foster for what your career aspirations are or what exactly you need to fulfill in your career and therefore you can't remain loyal to an organization that cannot provide the level of growth that you want so that's the difference and the, on the last one with regards to taking a career break i think a career break normally it comes with uh fatigue most of the time your mental uh, health you know with the state that you are in emotionally and sometimes you just need to step out of the circle for you to start thinking and looking at things differently because sometimes when you're inside the system itself it becomes very difficult for you to explore different opportunities and your interests and for that reason you might actually want to take a career break for you to reflect properly for you to engage in other you know opportunities or interests that really ignite that spark in you because you need that for you to be able to miss you know the environment and the red race you know so those could be some of the things and sometimes you'd find that organizations do restructure, right? And in them restructuring, you realize that uh, it, off it offers you an opportunity to try something new. 
it offers you an opportunity to move into another, you know, into another environment. For example, when companies restructure, they will always have alternatives in terms of having to let go of people. And sometimes you find alternatives uh, require you to actually move either into another department where you can utilize your transferable skills or soft skills versus your technical skills and that actually talks to you tapping into new into new avenues right so those are the th some of the things that really contribute you know in terms of whether do i leave the current organization do mm -hmm. i actually take a break or you know it's just me maybe moving out of a specialist to a to, uh, to a more generalist role from a more technical role into a more you know people centric or people management role so there are different contributors depending depending on where you are in terms of your state of mind and how you are also tracking with your career plan if yes. you do have one in place. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, okay. I think you're touching on a very important point around the role of career planning in career pivoting. And we'll just get back to that. But I just wanted to read this uh, comment from Hoitzi, uh, dot your MD, who said uh, it definitely comes as a result of burnout to a point of questioning your love for your career. I'm assuming she is uh, talking about the, the inspiration or the motivation rather uh, behind making a career pivot. And I do think that at some point, you know, uh, it, it is a result of uh, stagnation. It mm. is a result of burnout mm. and not being able to see your career or approach it from a different perspective that allows you to be energized, that allows you to contribute positively to your career. Now, you mentioned something about moving within the organization. So that brings up the question then around how do we then look out for job rotations potentially within that organization uh, as a means of helping us to explore uh, different career paths? So whether it's a job rotation through job shadowing or um, temporary assignments where you can just come on over and above your day-to-day -day work where you decide that uh, you, know, you want to join a specific team because you want to gain skill sets that are related to your next career move. Sure. I think the first starting point in this, it's really around having to be self-aware. Self-awareness mm -hmm. is actually the foundation of any career move that you might want to make. What are my strengths? What are my developmental areas? Where do I see my, you know, my, my, my career growth in the next short to medium term? And probably even uh, long term. So that is actually quite, uh, quite important. Secondly, it's actually making your aspirations you know, for, for a stretched role or, you know, for a career rotation or shadow known to your line managers or to any decision makers within the organization that could really support or sponsor your job rotation. Because mm -hmm. it's not all organizations that actually have, you know, a talent management, um, you know, processes and plans and procedures that are in place that really, you know, allow for job rotations and job shadowing either for their uh, for their hyper talent or any form of talent within the organizations. So in the absence of that, you need to take the lead and have the conversation with the right people. The starting point yes. in your line manager to say, this is where I am, this is where I see myself. And I think if I can actually get stretched into a particular space, I will grow more. And I think that whatever that Mbali is doing, I could learn from it. Is it, is it possible that I can spend four hours with Mbali, you know, uh, in a week, right? Because mm -hmm. some of the things they are not in place and in, in them not in place, it's an opportunity for you to make your employer away in terms of what is it that can be done to grow you as a talent. And that can also be a, an eye opener for the organization to relook in terms of how they manage their, their talent. But again, also look for opportunities to network outside of your uh, organization as well. So do yes. not limit your, your, your career network within only your department, within only your organization, but look outside of your organization, look in the industry, look in the, in the market in terms of the roles that you want, the kind of skills you want to grow into, where you could actually have opportunities that grow you mm -hmm. and engage with those people, network with those people, find mm -hmm. out from them, what does it take for me to get to where you are? or tell me how your journey was for you to get here. Of course, journeys, they differ from one person to the other. Some of, 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 some of them, they have detours. Some of them, they have pivots. But I think it's, it's important for you to have conversations with the relevant people and also at different levels, you know, for you to, to understand that. And by having those, organs, uh, sorry, those conversations, then it allows you opportunities for job shadowing, for job rotations, 
for short or even long term, you know, uh, assignments in your organization or outside of your organization. But self awareness and actually having the right conversations by verbalizing your career aspiration becomes important wow. because oftentimes people think that I will do it on my own. And to be honest, it's very difficult to do it on your own. Yes, you can. There has been instances where people have done it on their own, but it's much better, you know, if you've got people that are supporting you, people that are enabling you, people that have really walked, you know, uh, the journey as well, and people that can generally think of you when the right opportunities come. You can say, oh, so-and-so did mention, let me check if they're available, let me check if they'd be interested, you know, in this short-term, you know, assignment. So those are some of the things that one has to do to make sure that they get those uh, rotations or those, uh, you know, short assignments and shadowing by just making them known to the relevant people. Sure, sure. Oh, that was a lot of insight. Uh, but I think the top three that I can just think of right now and just summary of what you said, number one, self-awareness, right? Understanding what your weaknesses, your strengths are, also understanding what your interest is also in line with your current capabilities and what it is that you might need to cover up for in, in terms of the role that you want to uh, pivot into. Then secondly, your relationships. So networking, identifying key okay. individuals that you can talk to. So doing a bit of research around what it takes to make a pivot into a specific area and building uh, that uh, relationship or those relationships rather with those individuals. And then lastly, positioning. I think I would summarize that last point around positioning yourself. So by vocalizing what it is that you want to do, your next move and your aspirations, uh, it allows you to strategically position yourself for that pivot so that you stay top of mind should an opportunity come up. Now, I don't want to this uh, uh, question from um, one of the um, viewers to disappear. So I'm just going to ask that before moving on to the other list of questions that we got earlier from the audience. So Fifi Graham wants to know, as a graduate trainee, you sometimes feel that you are overlooked for roles. Would that be a manager gatekeeping or is it a matter of a, a, a pivot? How would I need to pivot to move into a role? So I think as a graduate, it's actually important for you also to allow yourself enough time to study the environment and the people that you work with so that you know who are the decision makers and what it really takes, uh, you know, for you to get to the next level or to probably find a permanent placement in the, in the organization. But like I said, it doesn't matter how junior you are. You need to make your interest known to your line manager and to anyone else who's willing to listen to you in the organization. So if you're a new graduate, inform your manager. I've been here for now 12 months. I'm going into my 18th month cycle, depending on the duration of the program. And I actually love being in this organization. And I see growth opportunities uh, for myself. Mm -hmm. With the exposure that I have received, these are the areas that I'd actually like to explore. So communicate that. And if you're within a, a department, look for people that are, you know, that are available or that might have time you know, to actually you know, mentor you in terms of also having to understand the environment um, on its own. Because sometimes we think that the decision might only lie with the line manager, but it lies with different people. But also the decision of the line manager also depends on the environment as well. So hence I say you always need to understand the dynamics of the environment that you are working in, but communicate those and also put yourself forward as a graduate. I know I have had in many instances where people say, why must I always put my hand up? You know, why must I you know, mm -hmm. uh, always be the one raising my hand? Unfortunately, as a graduate, as junior as you are, you need as much exposure as you possibly can. So you cannot want to hold back from a learning opportunity just because, you know, uh, there are other people in the, in, the, in the environment, right? So also understand who are, the, who are the key people in that space who you can actually ask questions, who is your go-to you know, person, who is the person that's likely to be honest with you. And the other thing, get feedback as well as a graduate, right? From your line manager, from your peers, from other stakeholders or people that you work with to say, you know what, I've worked with you for so long, what feedback can you give me, right? Because we also have blind spots that can mm -hmm. contribute to the decisions of you know, of managers deciding whether a graduate needs to stay or needs to leave. So also understand that what are my blind spots? What can I do to improve? Is there an opportunity for me to get, uh, you know, piece of work that will actually expose me to this, right? Mm -hmm. So we also mm -hmm. find it very difficult to ask for feedback 
and to receive a feedback. And that is one thing that is very important when you pivot your, your career because you want to actually have, you know, holistic, uh, you know, information. You want to have a clear lay of the land in terms of what, this is what I'm good at. I need to keep at it and I need to make sure that I maintain this. This is where my weaknesses are. So for, therefore, I need to put more effort into one, two, three, four. And this is maybe possible in the next three months, maybe in the next six months. And who can I identify? Even if it's another graduate, that's my accountability partner, you know, in me having to work on some of these things. So as a graduate, don't be complacent and don't just assume because you're junior, you can't actually steer your career or just, you know, put your career in the hands of your line manager thinking that, you know, they are responsible. Unfortunately, they also have, you know, their careers to, to think about. Yes. But it's also how you actually show up and step up that really makes them, you know, to want to invest in you more. Sure, sure. So you've done the groundwork, you know, you've identified that you want to make a pivot. There's an industry that you want to go into, but now it's about polishing yourself up, uh, you know, to be attractive to potential recruiters. Uh, Amanda Bassa asks, in terms of resumes slash CVs and LinkedIn profile optimization, what advice would you give to someone looking to pivot into a new field? Sure. So if you're looking into pivoting into a new field, so first of all, like I said earlier, you know, have a conversation with the people that are in that field to really understand what, what's happening. And with your CV and with your LinkedIn or your, uh, your profile, I think also understand what are the transferable skills that you currently have that are applicable in the next role that you are looking for. Because you also can't, you know, apply with the current resume that you have in your in your specific field, but you want to go into something else. So show the, the skills that are needed into that career, how you are applying them and how you will apply them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the future. And for those people that are writing a small um, career summary or career objective on their CVs, or on their LinkedIn, I think it's important to also make mention of that, that to say, I'm an HR specialist looking to transitioning into public relations, right? Oh. Because of whatever. Oh, sure. And so indicate sure. that so that people don't just read about your HR profile, but whilst you're trying to get opportunities in marketing or in, or in PR. So that's very important. And from a LinkedIn perspective, identify the people that are already in that field, you know, follow them, follow the organizations, you know, various webinars that are in that particular field so that you understand the language, you understand the current trends, so that when you converse, you also start conversing in that way so that you can even contribute to certain, you know, to certain platforms. Unfortunately, you have to do, you know, the, the hard work and you need to dig deep into yourself, you know, to create your visibility and position yourself as a potential, you know, candidate into that space. 100%. So two things that um, I resonate with in what you said is number one, identifying those transferable skills, right? Uh, I, I attended an event sometime last year and uh, one of the speakers at the event was actually saying that you have to look at your career as a skill set or a portfolio rather of skill set that you can package and position uh, when you do want to move into a new role or a new field. And so it's important to be able to identify what skill sets have I, you know, gained along the way and how could these be of use in this new role that I want to move into? And then secondly, around LinkedIn optimization, I think also just positioning yourself in terms of contributing content towards the field that you want to move into. Okay. So start developing, you know, thought pieces or reflective articles around that specific area and demonstrating that there's a certain level of interest, of understanding um, and of alignment that you have with that industry that can help you uh, position yourself for your pivot. So it's not only just about, you know, optimizing your profile in terms of your mm. work experience and the hard skills that you may have gained. It's also on the softer side of things where, through, mm. you know, content marketing efforts uh, that you can start uh, developing articles or blog posts you can share on a platform like LinkedIn so that you demonstrate that uh, you have knowledge of that field. So 
I want to move on to uh, the next question, but uh, just to uh, give the people that have just joined the live, we're talking to Boniwe Dunster, who is an HR specialist, and uh, we're talking to her about how to make a successful career pivot. I know in the promotion of this live, we didn't mention the word successful, but that's what we are looking for. We want a transition that is successful, probably might not be smooth, but mm -hmm. ultimately uh, one that is going to uh, make you uh, fulfilled and get give you your desired uh, outcome. So another question that we received earlier was from Makole Peño, um, and he asked, what are some of the common mistakes that people make when attempting a career pivot, and how can these mistakes be avoided? Sure. Uh, one of them I've already mentioned, believing that you'll do it on your own. <laughs> so never actually uh, think that you'll do it on your own. So always look for a circle always look for networks and experts in, in that field that can actually help you. Where possible, if you can identify opportunities for mentorship, for coaching, or probably a potential sponsor that you can actually let know to, uh, to say, I actually looking into moving into this. And I know that you actually are well, you know, are uh, connected in that space. Are you able to actually help me? And you can actually then get to put action plans into place. And I think to that point, actually, which is my second point around putting actions into place. So you need to actually outline why, where do I want to go and what is it that I need to get to that point. So oftentimes people have to pivot their careers just in the dark, you know, whatever happens at a particular point in time and you wish and, you know, you want luck to follow you. But you need to be very strategic and very clear to say, this is my plan. These are some of the things that I need to put in place. These are the networks or professional bodies that I also need uh, to join as well to actually help me to get into that into that space, right? So you need to write those things down. You need to connect with the right people. You need to also join uh, the professional bodies as well because they are there to actually help you navigate some of these complexities for you to, to grow yourself. And the other one, which is very common, especially with people that are long tenured in a space, they believe that due to their tenure, they could easily get whatever opportunities uh, that they want. Some sure. of them, they end up feeling so entitled to, to opportunities. So tenure doesn't equal promotion. Tenure yeah. doesn't equal any form of entitlement. And tenure doesn't guarantee you anything in your career or in an organization. You can be loyal in an organization for 10 to 15 years, right? But yes. if you're not really actively directing you know, your career, everybody else will pass you by and new people will actually come and actually grow within that space in front of your eyes, but they are new. So do not, do not ever in your career believe that tenure, you know, uh, you know, uh, secures anything, you know, at a point mm -hmm. in time, anything can actually happen. So those are for me are the top four mistakes that one should actually avoid. Like treat your career as, um, as a commodity. You know how we always track the rent, uh, versus the US dollar or whatever, yes. you, know, you always want to see yes. what is the rent, what, you know, uh, you know, what is the rent dollar exchange. So you need to treat your career, you know, like that, where we monitor the markets Monday to Friday, right? We know that on the mm -hmm. weekend, the market rests, but Monday again, we, we resume. And I think one needs to do that with their career as well. Never sleep on your career oh. and think that, you know what, uh, something miraculous will, will happen. You need to actually be active around you know where you want to be and even with a career plan there's details somewhere else you know mm. sometimes you take you take a step forward and sometimes you take a step backward but taking a step backward sometimes might actually be necessary you know for sure, you to sure. actually um you know to actually get to the next point and maybe one last thing that i can add to that when you actually want to pivot your career or you want to transition into a different field oftentimes we are so married to titles that we have mm -hmm. to an extent that I feel that I can't move from an HR manager to an HR practitioner or to HR consultant, mm -hmm. but not realizing that that particular move is needed for a year or maybe 18 months for me to cement certain skills for me to be able to move to a different role, right? So having to pivot, sometimes it means taking a step backward. Yes. Sometimes it means yes. taking a step, you know, sideways. But as long as you have a clear plan in terms of what that means, then it helps you to move forward. Amazing, amazing. Oh, I love that. Um, the points around don't be married to your title because that could be the thing that is a stumbling block in your process of pivoting, right? Yep. And I think a lot of people hold on to 
uh, lateral moves, right? So if they pivot, they think that I have to keep the title, I have to keep the same level of earnings, and I have to keep yep. the same level of influence. But if you're going to a new field altogether, chances are you have to start from the ground up, you know, and you have to be willing to put the effort and the hours and the relationships uh, to be able to establish yourself and get back to a point that you were in your previous role. We have got a comment here from Tavi Singh, and she is saying, uh, you are speaking to me regards uh taking a step backwards so yeah that's the point around you know how do you pivot sometimes you pivot laterally sometimes you pivot yeah. by taking a step backward i think very rarely you pivot by uh, moving into a, uh, a position that is higher than what you currently are especially if it is a new field so you also touched on a point around um you know uh tenure if you've been at a company for a really long time and then you think that that is going to guarantee a certain outcome um, and it links to a question that came through uh, from the audience earlier that said, how do you address concerns about age discrimination when advising older employees who are considering a career pivot, especially into industries that may be skewed towards younger people? Hmm. I don't know if there is an industry that's skewed towards younger people because we need uh, all generations and people of all ages to contribute to those industries. Yeah, I think you are right. But sometimes you find that in your, like your, your fintech, you know, your tech companies, okay. they might be okay. more, they might lean towards, you know, uh, young blood, energetic people and so forth. Fair enough. I, I'm that's not saying fair. that would be the case, but sometimes it does happen depend, depending on the culture of the organization or the, the industry. But I think for me, ultimately, it comes down to what capabilities you have and the potential you show to making it into that into that role. So do not let age be a deterrent to where you want to go because sometimes you might actually discriminate somebody because of age. But when you start conversing with the person, you realize, but this is the kind of skill that I require. This is the kind of capability that we are missing. And then for that reason, you might even get to actually either appointing or giving that person a, you know, an opportunity in that space. So I think mm -hmm. even if the person might be old, but it's about how do you get to show up? Because sometimes it doesn't mean because you're old, you don't have the energy. It doesn't mean because you're old, you know, you can't learn new skills. It doesn't mean, you know, it, it doesn't really mean that we know that we've got different generations and different generations are characterized by, you know, different things. But it's how you yes. show up as an expert. How do you show up as an adaptable individual? How do you show up as somebody that's willing to learn? You know, continuous learning is the biggest differentiator, you're right, when it comes to anything, whether it can be age, whether it can be race, whether it can be anything else. The spirit of learning. It's mm -hmm. so attractive to a lot of organizations sure. and to a lot of sure. managers. So just make sure that it doesn't matter the age, but show up as best as you can, irrespective of the age. Uh -huh. And for a second, forget about your age when yeah. you are, you know, yes. put in front of decision makers or people that are likely to give you that opportunity. So I think for me, that, that's that. Because I have seen in the past whereby people have actually changed perceptions on people saying, no, this person is old or this person, you know, um, comes from this particular organization. Therefore, we can't because they are they're not a culture fit. But as soon as they have that conversation with the person, you know, the whole perspective or the whole, you know, biases, it actually changes. So I think in that is just how do you show up as your best self, irrespective of the age dynamic? Oh, amazing. Amazing. I love that so much. Don't discriminate against yourself before others do it. Do not yep. do that. So we received another question from an audience uh, member, um, Paul Tato, who asked, what motivates you specifically, uh, Monue, <laughs> to help individuals with their career transitions? And mm -hmm. how do you personally find fulfillment in your role as an HR specialist? What a beautiful question. Wow, what a question. Um, I think for me, what has really led me to the kind of work that I've been doing for the past few years, so I've worked in different organizations and different industries. And being in HR, I have seen how talent and performance management works in different companies. Sometimes you find that the principles, you know, are the same, but the application might be, might be different. And I have witnessed people that are hard workers, people that are competent being overlooked right sure. not because uh, 
they are not deserving, but either because how they show up or how they don't talk the right language or how they don't understand how to navigate the complexities of the, of the work environment. Mm -hmm. So one of my values in life is around fairness, right? Um, and it is for that reason that I do the work that I do to say, if all fails, let's just be fair, right? Sure, uh, people sure. can have sponsors, people can have coaches, people can have, you know, advocates in their careers, but can we just bring an element of fairness into, mm -hmm. into what we do? And can we also recognize people beyond the biases that we have, right? So I worked in manufacturing, which was very, uh, you know, operational, which was very unionized. Then I moved into management consulting. It was chalk and cheese. Then I moved into, you know, financial uh, services. Now I'm in aviation. You see how things are different. But ultimately, people's careers are decided by people. So for me, it's about know what is happening, understand what really happens, like understand the unwritten rules, you know. There are unwritten rules in corporate, right? Nobody's going to tell you to be, to be vocal. Mm -hmm. Chances are mm -hmm. nobody's going to be uh, telling you to say seek a mentor or a coach, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or nobody's going to tell you now that you actually have completed this big project. Let's talk about your project. Let's make your project known to the right people, to the right decision, to the right decision makers, right? This is mm -hmm. how you get to negotiate your salary. And I think for me, those were the things that really broke my heart and disadvantaged a lot of people in corporate. Mm -hmm. And I took it upon myself and because I've experienced it myself, by the way. Yes. So it's it's easier, yes. you know, for me to, to actually understand with people to understand people that are going through that because I have somehow uh, you know in the in the past, even when I started where you feel that but this should not have been this way, right? But if I had the right guidance, you know, the right uh, you know, mentorship, you know, have reached out to the right people, things could have turned out, you know, differently. But I said to myself, I am one person, but I can use my experience, you know, to actually influence and, you know, uh, educate more people than just keeping the sure. things uh, to myself. Sure. And sure. for me, what's fulfilling, it's somebody saying to me, now I know better, mm -hmm. now I understand, mm -hmm. or I've got the job, or, you know, today I was able to, to speak in a meeting, mm -hmm. or today I actually mm -hmm. went into the career conversation more prepared, or oh, this is how I prepared for my interview. Of course, not everybody that I interact with you know, will have the same outcome because some of the things are really outside of our control. Yes. But for me, just to hear one person said, I've made it, I've got that job. I was able to negotiate a better salary. I was able to, you know, to stand up to certain things that were not right. I was able to vocalize or verbalize mm -hmm. some of my career aspiration. Mm -hmm. And for that mm -hmm. reason, I received a bursary or whatever it may be, you know, for me, that is fulfilling enough. And mm -hmm. I think if that is done, then I'm, I'm good. You've done your job. Then you've done your I've job. I've done my job. I've done my job. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I don't want to lose some of the questions that have come up, questions and comments. So let me just uh, read a few. So Mrs. Uh, Healthy4 says, thank you so much, ladies, uh, taking all the notes as this is my current season. I guess a season of considering a career pivot. Uh, we also have another comment or question rather from Mrs. Um, Healthy saying, if I may ask, uh, when a Approaching someone in the field of choice, how do I engage them without being presumptuous? Do I just send an email directly? Do I find their contact numbers and contact them directly? How does she navigate approaching um, an individual who might be in her desired field? Sure. So I think like emailing, it's actually quite good, but chances are people are busy for email. So your email might also be missed in the midst of everything else. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they can't recognize the name or they might be traveling and therefore your email, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, gets missed. So if it's possible and you know somebody that can connect you to that person, I think for me, that's the, that's the first price, but it's not always uh, possible, but continue to email or uh, you know, uh, send messages if they have if they are senior people and they have PAs, leave the message with the with the PA. If mm -hmm. it's somebody that is also very out there in terms of their contributions, in terms of social media or the likes of LinkedIn, make sure that you follow them. Make sure that you know you interact, you know, with their posts. You know, either through uh, you know reacting to them, you know, contributing, responding to those things, you know, or even mm -hmm. challenging some of their thoughts that they that they post. Trust you me, people will take note and they would realize to say, 
but I've had Mbadi com this person commenting on my stuff for the last three months, or I've had this person, you know, yes. all of those things. So there are very there are many creative ways rather in terms of how you can reach out to a person. But my point is don't just rely on one method, which is like just an email, right? Yes. And yes. if you do get a contact number, you some people don't really like for people to call them if they don't know them so probably a text you know with context but that is precise and succinct and to the point might actually uh help as well but for me my best bet is if somebody can connect you to that person sure. and position your interest sure. in engaging uh that particular person that will actually help uh you know quite a, a great deal amazing Amazing. Yeah. We've got another comment here from uh, Amanda Dot Green One, uh, and uh, she was just saying, "I love that the spirit of learning is very attractive to any organization." Uh, and that was to just the uh, comment that you were saying around navigating age discrimination in specific industries, uh, and that if you do have that spirit of learning and continuous uh, self development, uh, then that will be your key differentiator and might be the thing that makes you break through into that industry. Now, I want to ask about the role of performance evaluations um, that does come in when you're considering a career pivot, specifically within an organization, right? So chances mm -hmm. are the manager that you are reporting into is uh, probably uh, you know, uh, talking to or is friends or has a relationship with people that might be in a different uh, department and the department that you want to move into. And so because your manager has insight into your performance levels and evaluations, et cetera, they could influence um, you know, that process of pivoting or moving to some extent in a more informal way. Um, how do you then navigate that if you find yourself in that situation? And sometimes, I mean, your performance is a result of being in an unhealthy team. So if a team is, you know, toxic or the relationship that you might have with the manager uh, might not be great uh, that could affect your performance but it might not necessarily be a true reflection yeah. of your potential and what you're capable of so how do you navigate those politics and dynamics especially if you, especially if you want to move uh, within the same organization true yeah, that's actually quite a loaded question that has a lot of elements in it right yes. but i think for me what's important right there understand who the ultimate decision makers are so i would sure. never underestimate who is important in making that decision or rather in influencing that decision your line manager will always to a certain extent you know have influence in terms of whether you move or not move and at what point of your career do you move but also know who else outside of this space influences that decision who are the stakeholders that I need to align myself with or those that I need to make my career interest known to mm -hmm. so that the ultimate person who has to make the decision can actually have different voices in having to decide for themselves right mm -hmm. they might actually get feedback from your manager but it might be so and so speaks highly of Mbali's work of Mbali's work ethic you know the the projects that she has worked for their adaptability you know their skills and all of those and yes the manager says this and you know i'm leaning towards you know what the majority of the people are saying because that's what i have noticed sure. so make sure that sure. you understand who those people are and continue to actually advocate for your work as well right in those conversations so it's not really a matter about moving but it's about what is it that I have done? What is it that I'm able or uh, able to do in your space or how I will contribute, you know, to your to your department. And also understand with the space that you wanna, you know, move into or pivot into, understand what are they working on, what is their strategy, you know, what are their challenges, you know, what are they battling with, right? And when you move, what are those uh, things that you will be able to bring on board to help solve, you know, the problem? So your manager can have that influence but make sure that you actually try to direct the narrative, you know, for, for yourself. And there's, a, there's something called um, talent hoarding, right? Whereby line managers actually keep people to themselves for whatever reason, either because if I let her go, what's gonna happen? If I let her go, oh, then my weaknesses oh. are gonna show. If oh. I let her go, one of my favorite people will not be able to shine because they are shining because of her 
of her work right oh so you need goodness. to make sure that you do everything within your means you know to try to actually avoid that or do not fall a victim of career hoarding so performance management is a good opportunity for you to do that because it allows you to actually even seek feedback from different stakeholders and incorporate that in terms of your strengths in terms of your um of your developmental areas it allows you an opportunity to also have an honest conversation with your line manager you might mm -hmm. hold different views in terms of your performance or where you want to be but if you get into those conversations well equipped to talk about those uh you know uh those challenges around uh the feedback that you got your performance you know understanding uh where you are in terms of of your career and where, where, you, where you want to move it also makes it difficult for your line manager to assume to say no you're not good enough you're not moving but performance management is an enabler for you to have you know open and courageous conversation with your with your line manager mm -hmm. and you bring insights you know and your insights it's your feedback uh mm -hmm. from different stakeholders that you have you know positively uh serviced it also allows you to bring uh you know your portfolio of evidence to demonstrate you know uh you know what you have done contrary to his or her belief that you might not be good enough so i think for me it's really around always equip yourself with the right level of information about your, yourself around your role and where you also want to be and every time you get an opportunity to get into a conversation make sure you get into a conversation prepared because oh. that to a certain extent might disempower your line manager who's trying to hold you back yeah yeah amazing amazing is there anything uh, such as pivoting too soon <sighs> or too often <laughs> this, question, this, this question sounds like it's going towards the direction of job hopping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so, kind of guilty of that, so I'm asking for myself. <laughs> so I think uh, for me, it's that um, sometimes when you're making career moves or you want to pivot into something different, make sure that irrespective of how soon it is, Make sure that there's a, there's a legacy of some sort that you have built. Make sure where you are oh, leaving, sure. there's some oh. level of impact, right? Uh, and there's, you know, you can talk about the impact. You can make, talk about the positive contributions that you have made. You can talk about results, right? So for me, I think too soon is not necessarily around, um, you know, the time frame, but it's about what is it that you have learned? What is it that you have created? What is it that you have developed in that space? Because oftentimes, where line managers struggle or even hr itself where it struggles with people moving around is like but what exactly have you done there you know mm -hmm. um if we are to make a, a call and get a reference in terms of your work you know what are they gonna oh, say that so. you did you know and so. when people start missing that it feels like whenever it gets hot in the kitchen you're always moving you know oh. what i mean oh. so it's like when are you always moving but why are you moving right what really mm -hmm. supports mm -hmm. the move but like just make sure that there's a story for you to tell there's a success story for you to tell and then when you say i've achieved this and this is what i'm known for here then it's good then you can move right oh. so allow yourself to also be spoken about in terms of your contribution so don't miss that opportunity there's no point in you working for five different organizations and none of those know you for anything else sure. right so got sure. against sure. so got against sure. um got against that however also i want also advocate for people having to stay in environments that are unhealthy or that are, are toxic purely because they need to get the years in in terms of experience if it's toxic if it's unhealthy please feel free to move at any given time even if it's within a month you can see to say uh you know the values in this place the work ethic in this place and the level of toxicity is too high for my tolerance level or for the kind of environment or organizations that i want to work with then you can move at any given point in time and when you get into a conversation with your a potential employer you don't necessarily have to get into the details around why you are leaving however you can make mention to say i am looking for for opportunities within a work environment that really aligns with my work ethic with my values where i can be able to contribute you know positively you know and all of without intimidation or so you don't have to talk about the nitty-gritties of you and your 
current or past employer, but just highlight, you know, the environment that you need, the kind of, you know, space that will make you grow and allow you to contribute to the best of your, you know, of your ability. So don't stay for too long just because you need to get the yes in, but if it's toxic, be able to move, but be able to also articulate it well in the interview because sometimes people they get asked that question and they go into the politics and into the politics and therefore it's no longer about you and what you're bringing into the table or what you're capable of but now people are listening to you and the politics of the of the past you know employer or the employer that you are trying to leave so just keep it as simple as you potentially can very subtle very very light but highlighting you know what is it that you are looking for that you are not getting into the current, uh, into the current, or you didn't get in, into your past employer. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's some solid advice there. Um, and I think it's just uh, important to to have that sense of self awareness, right? Uh, that usually does come across during an interview process when you you can tell that an individual has thought through why they're making the changes and the moves that they're making. Uh, and so again, back to the point around just be you know aware enough in terms of what your value system is uh, as an individual. Does the value system align with your current organization and uh, if that is not in alignment maybe that is a uh, reason enough for you to move to another job either through a pivot or through staying uh, within that industry now pivot versus a plan for me those are two things that are almost paradoxical because when you think of a pivot you think that it's something that happens because of a change either a change in perspective a change in environment um, or a change in your life stage whereas a career plan you know seems to be very solid uh, very linear almost in the approach so you mentioned earlier that you know a career plan can play a role in your pivot but if a pivot is something that is you know sudden um then it, it might not necessarily be uh, foreseen or anticipated down the line so how do you think then um you know the career plan plays a role in preparing you for a pivot down the line sure so a career plan like i said so you've got a career plan that is all good and well in terms of where you want to be and where you want to go but then it can actually give you some details on and pivots which you need to take into account and i think for me the question is what is it that i'm going to learn or what is it that i'm actually learning where i am right what are the mm -hmm. growth opportunities as well and if i pivot what what level of fulfillment will i get as well as an individual because oftentimes we don't just work because uh we're looking for salaries yes we, we do but sometimes you're also looking for fulfillment you know in in what you do uh, every day and sometimes you find that you might have this good career plan but you're not really fulfilled so the question is that what exactly is it that you're missing from your work and as soon as you start answering that question to say this is what i'm missing this is what my purpose is this is the level of contribution that i want to make and then that can somehow lead into a pivot but you can actually pivot within your own career plan like i said sometimes you can actually move sideways sometimes you can actually move you know um you know a step lower and sometimes it's really around you know taking taking a break i think for me it's like one one person needs to understand that one thing about a career, a career is not stagnant. A career is not, you know, it, it's not saying it's going to move from point A to B to C, you know. So there's, there will be multiple of movements that you that you need to make in your in your career. And for that reason, you also need to allow the journey to, to unfold, right? And one of the things that I, I, I hold dear to my heart when it comes to careers, always have an accountability partner, mm -hmm. somebody that will either nudge you somebody that will actually remind you of why you are where you are and somebody that can actually have honest you know uh conversations with you so you find pivots within your your career plan but sometimes you find that you might actually have to pivot out completely and start you know something new and if that's the case the question is like why am i starting something new what am i looking for what how will i contribute to that how will that bring fulfillment in me and will that even allow me the opportunity to to grow so it's very it's a very intertwined 
you know, relationship between pivoting and having your own career yeah. plan. I think you can't really separate the two completely. They, I think they're so intertwined to, to an extent that I am very lucky in saying they can run parallel to each other. Mm. They're so intertwined that you'd find one within the other. Sure. Sure. And maybe just in closing, um, any mentorship, coaching, uh, you know, fellowship programs, etc., that individuals can look into if they are looking to pivot? So I think for me, just understand where you are as an individual. Like I said, self-awareness is very important. And once you are self-aware, it allows you to actually have a clear view of where you want, where you want to be. And never underestimate the power of having to network, right? And so never navigate the work environment on your own, right? You always need different perspectives so that you can make your own decisions. And then there are a number of career coaches. I know career coaching is actually quite, you know, expensive. But believe you me, it will definitely be worth what you have what you have paid because you start looking at things in a different lens. You start looking inside yourself in terms of what what is it that I, what potential have I suppressed within myself, right? And coaching sure. allows sure. you to unleash that. And coaching also allows you to actually find your own you know answers and direction. But of, mm -hmm. of course, with an expert that will actually uh, navigate, nav help you to navigate that. Mentorship is very important for you to identify the people that are in the space that you are, people that have walked the journey that you are working or that you're about to embark on. And also never underestimate having a peer, peer to peer mentor or peer to peer coaching. It's also the, it's, sure. it's, it's also good enough, you know, as well, right? You just need somebody that could actually be committed to you and walking the, you know, the journey with you. I always advocate for professional membership. I'm a, I'm an advocate of professional memberships because it, it also shares platforms and information that you would not ordinarily find everywhere else right so make sure you 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 identify the ones that are relevant to where you are or where you want to be and then in terms of platform there's so many like there's the national mentorship movement so which is uh which is also a south, a south african uh, mentorship movement where they actually you actually register there you tell them what your your aspirations are and they try to match you with mentors from different industries depending where you are so i think that's that's good there's a lot of you know coaching um platforms as well there's comenta there's comesa there's ICF, you know, uh, you know, as well that you can you can actually try to understand what they are offering is in you having to identify the right people to to um, you know to support you. And there's a lot. What did I share with you not so long ago? Bali was it the Obama Fellowship Program or was it with yes, someone else? Did, yeah, but I think did. it just recently yeah. closed Close. two weeks uh, yeah. two weeks ago. There was the McKenzie one, I think. Is that it might potentially be closing on the 28th i'm not sure mm -hmm. so there's a lot so actually look at a number of consulting organizations as well because they're all they always have a lot of programs to offer when it comes to when it comes to career development as well so don't be complacent and just don't wait for opportunities to come sometimes you just need to go there and look for the information dig deep and ask questions be curious and i think that could get you far right one hundred percent. In closing, where can we find you? Where can we find out more about the work that you do? So you can actually find me on all my social platforms. Uh, I go by the name of Bonnie Dancer, and on this particular page, it's Bonnie, where your HR specialist. So I would respond to your to your DMs, to your inboxes, and then if there's anything that we need to take outside of this platform, then we can schedule some time to actually engage further. But I try to be as responsive as I possibly can in with my socials amazing she really is responsive by the way I <laughs> thank you so much for the gift <laughs> of your time you. and insight as always when you was a fruitful discussion um so much to just take note of and so much to reflect on and for anybody in our audience this discussion will be saved on the ig page here on mentorship mondays you can also find it on our youtube page my name is Mbalim Ziyan. it's been an absolute pleasure hosting and uh, holding the fort for Nozi Poshabalala this evening. I hope you will be tuned into the next segment of Mentorship Monday next week. Thank you and uh, good night. Thank See you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.